to blue eyes, white and see. Now I know there's A, B, C. Yeah. Next time we'll do sing with me. Yeah. When we decided to have kids, we knew child care was going to be a huge cost. We didn't know, like, how much of a cost. And I think to some extent we, like before having kids, we sort of naively figured like we're both, we both have good jobs. Like I'm a teacher, I'm a middle school teacher, and Cam is an architect. But like, <laughs> it's a real, um, it's meant some lifestyle adjustments. Well, the first year we did do a nanny share because we thought that would be the most affordable thing. Um, but then like the cost with that add up, and then Amari went to a daycare that we liked, but it cost more than rent. And right now I'm on leave, um, so childcare is, is, is me, which is challenging. We live in the city because we want our kids to have this like rich, multicultural, progressive um, education, particularly now that we have two kids. 3K and 4K were absolutely a part of the like, calculation of whether or not to keep living here. But it's not a guarantee, and that is really stressful. But yeah, if, if 3K and 4K aren't options for the kids, then I don't think we would keep living here. I'm Dr. Luis Aguilar. I'm a third year Jacoby resident in emergency medicine. Most of my shifts are 12 hours and, and they can get stressful. But I love what I do uh, and it's a job where you can never be too comfortable. Anything can happen at any moment, especially when I work shifts in pediatric EDs and it's babies and children who are under my care. This is stressful enough, but it's the kind of stress that I train to work with. However, there are other stresses we residents deal with. The biggest one being how to survive in New York City on a fixed budget. My wife and I moved to New York City from Philadelphia, and initially we couldn't afford to live in Manhattan, and we also couldn't live in the Bronx, so we went to find something more affordable in Queens. Problem is, I need to drive to work in the Bronx, and tolls are a minimum 270 a month. Uh, add to this rent, which is 3,000, I have very little left at the end of the month. My wife and I don't go out too much. We shop at Costco to save money, and we prep our own meals. We have managed to get by up to this point, but. We couldn't do it without the ongoing help of my in-laws. They have had to help us pay for rent. They've gifted me the car that I drive currently and otherwise we would not be able to afford living in Queens. Housing, transportation, and the cost of living. Keeping all of these things manageable is essential, not just for us residents, but for everyone. Otherwise, we'll eventually have to move somewhere else where it's cheaper. My name is Zalaki Reed. I'm 21 years old and I grew up in Brooklyn, born and raised. I started facing homelessness around the age of 16, 17. I was homeless for like three years, three, four years. During my times of being homeless, I couldn't, I couldn't get no help really. Every time like I was trying to go and um, get a voucher, it was, always a delay. It was always a long wait. Having, having City FEPS, it would have offered another avenue. City FEPS would have definitely helped me to find permanent housing. I say this because if I had that, I wouldn't be sitting around waiting on Section 8 and just working jobs trying to save up to make one month or two months rent. City FEPS is only in place for DHS, DHS armed shelter members, not for the youth. I've always expected the city to do something for us. I expect them to take action. Because the thing about being homeless too is you can't always look to your family because you become a liability once you ask for too much. And so if I can't ask family, who can I go to? Who, who am I supposed to go to? My name is Amber Rodriguez. I am 23 years old. Aster has created a safe space for me to talk about my experience, for me to really process what happened and that it wasn't my fault and there isn't anything that I could have said or, or did different and to make peace so that I can heal and move on. 
Uh, Aster has been a safe space for me, specifically with my therapist, Christine. TRC is a trauma recovery center, and we are here to work with individuals that are affected by violent crimes in the community of the Bronx, and also those who have been affected by homicides in the community. So coming into Aster, I felt seen, I felt heard, I felt that I was put in a space that people genuinely want to support me and they love me and that I'm safe. The Trauma Recovery Center is free of service for everybody and it's not just therapy, it is wrapped around everything. If you need legal help, if you need housing supports, if you need anything, we are here to provide that. Oh, I think it's essential. I think having a program that is accessible, that is um, that is around the clock available care that people can utilize, not only just children. The city council has made a huge difference. Already we have touched a number of individuals, their families, the schools, everyone who has been able to benefit from the funding that we've already received is is succeeding and thank you so very much for everything that you've done